Okay, so for those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Louise Riley, and as you can see on the screen, um, I am an advisory board member for the UK, Ireland and Iceland, but also on top of that, I have my business alongside my husband, Ashley, and we are soaring managers, and we have been with the company now for 25 years. In fact, we celebrated um, 25 years just a, a few weeks ago, actually. And uh, we have really, really enjoyed our journey. We can continue to build our business now. But I have been an advisory board member with the company since 1998. I've been training since 1998. So, of course, there is part of what I do that is um, to do with the business and then also the products. So that's a little bit about me. Let's get straight on to the information that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So I thought what would be quite useful is to start off by giving you just a little bit of an understanding about what's going on in the marketplace today. So here's a few stats. These are fairly up-to-date stats. And you can see that, first of all, it says that men's grooming has a, a total market um, uh, um, a total market that if even if you think that it looks like it's a modest growth what we want to do is just like delve a little bit deeper into that and see what is actually happening and we can see that there is a um, an increase especially for British men on products around things like cleansers and moisturizers and even facial masks sales of male skincare grew by seven point percent and when we actually think about that particular area you think well okay um, what are the what, what kind of things are people wanting to buy into what is it all about 46 percent of men want their grooming routines to be clean so if we actually look at that the products that they're going to be putting onto their skin they want them to come from natural ingredients. We don't want them to be synthetic, but also that's from a personal point of view, but also clean for the environment. One of the things that is really important is that generally speaking, men use less products than women for their, their skincare or their overall um, uh, cleaning or male grooming, you might say. But even though they use less, that one of the things is that if there are um, benefits from those particular products, then that's when loyalty can start to begin. So we might start by introducing one or two products, but once those one or two products have really started to uh, uh, become their favorites, then we can start to expand out and share other products as well. As I said, what's a quite, quite an interesting thing to look at is the difference between men's skin and women's skin. And a lot of people don't realize that there is an actual difference. And this is actually down to, I've got a, a diagram I'm gonna put up for you anyway, but there's a, a, a difference in the actual structure of the skin. Now, just like women, men want their skin to feel and look really healthy. But of course, it's sometimes really important to actually look at the skin as male skin rather than just lumping it together and saying skin in general. Because let's have a, a, few, a look at a few different things. First of all, the thickness of the skin. Male skin on average is 20% thicker than female skin. And it actually contains more collagen. So collagen is one of the protein fibers that you have in your skin. And what happens with collagen as we start to age, in fact, the aging process, believe it or not, can actually start in your 20s. Not that you really see that going on. And because there is more collagen in men's skin, generally speaking, the skin will appear to be kind of a tighter, firmer uh, in appearance. But when, what starts to happen when it comes to the aging of the skin, then the, the collagen um, starts to break down, but it starts to age at a consistent rate. Whereas in female skin, you will start to have an accelerated rate in the aging process or how it appears in the skin, especially in our, our later years, you might say. 
So the other important thing is um, the sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands are actually attached to in the same areas with your hair follicle. And what the sebaceous gland does, it is going to produce this oil. And this oil is called sebum. In fact, twice as much of this oil is produced from the sebaceous glands in male skin compared to female skin. There are twice as many sebaceous glands and also the pores of male skin are also larger. Because there's more oil content on the surface of men's skin, then the skin can appear shinier and also the pH of the skin is slightly different as well. So that's just a, a few things to have a look at just overall when we're looking at male skin. So I just thought it'd be quite nice for you to have a, a, a diagram just to see the difference between male and female. And I, I would imagine from just looking at this, you can see straight away that the biggest difference that you've got is around um, the, the collagen. Can you see how it's more crisscrossy there? But I'm gonna start at the top and just to give you a bit of a, an overview, you might say, um, is that when we look at the epidermis, so that's the top layer of the skin, and that's the bit that we see, that is about, in thickness, just so you know, it's 0 0.1 millimeter. So this is what we see here. And all the layers of the skin have their own different roles. So the epidermis is kind of um, the layers that we see at the top, but where a lot of activity takes place is actually in the dermis, okay? So our dermis, um, we also have our, um, our fat cells, we have our connective tissue, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea to see a slight difference there. Skincare, what is the importance about skincare? Well, I'm gonna keep it, strip it right back down to basics. And that when you imagine that the surface of our skin hosts more than 500 species of bacteria. You might think, oh my gosh, but bacteria is something that is our, our first area for protection for immune defense, okay? So we don't want to disturb the balance of this very important bacteria that we get on the surface of our skin. So um, the protective barrier that we have, when we, and we don't want to upset the balance, as I said, and we're gonna have a look at that at the pH. That is um, to protect our body from the outside world, but also to protect it from the inside as well. And the whole idea of our skin is really to support and give optimal pH um, balance from a, as a natural defense. Now, as I said, the pH balance of our skin is um, very important. And I'm gonna talk about, first of all, what we have on the surface of our skin, which is called our acid mantle. So the acid mantle is really the barrier that we're talking about. So when we have a look at the acid mantle, as I said, this is really important um, to keep it in balance because this is the barrier that's going to protect us from things like um, bacteria and other contaminants that we don't want to get into our skin. But depending on what you put on the surface of your skin, can actually change the balance of your pH. And this can be down to very harsh cleansers. And some of these cleansers can be quite alkaline. Um, the other important thing is that through excessive environmental exposure, that can also cause a challenge as well. So if you have a look at this particular um, uh, area of the acidic to alkaline, and this is known as our pH scale. And if we first of all look at seven, so seven is classed as being neutral on the pH scale. Let's just have a look at going down to the, the acidic side, that when you have a look at the, the natural pH of healthy skin is 5.5. It can, it can vary slightly, as I said, the male skin, it can be slightly more acidic, okay? So it can just be a little bit lower than that. And, but generally on average, it's 5.5. So we call human skin as being mildly acidic. What's quite interesting to know 
that aloe has the same pH as human skin okay so if we were to look at the aloe activator for example which is probably our topical product that is the um the product that is has the most amount of aloe in without other ingredients so that is what the products that i would suggest as my neutral aloe product which i'll, I'll come back to explain that in a little while now we said about using harsh products on your skin and if we just swap it right over now to look at the alkaline section you can see there we've got conventional soap so conventional soaps they are quite harsh alkalines okay and if you put alkaline onto acidic skin you will notice that very very quickly because that's when your skin starts to feel a little bit taut in fact it starts to feel drier okay the other important thing to know is that when you move from say seven to eight eight to nine nine to ten it is ten times stronger so you can have a ph of 7.1 7.2 etc so one of the most important things is that we don't want to use strong alkalines on our skin because they, they they could be classed in that aggressive cleanser category now you can also see on that slide it says lemon so why i put lemon on there because lemon has an acidic value of approximately 2.3 and sometimes when you put something on your skin that is more acidic, it can change the consistency or the stickiness of the surface of the skin. Now that is also important because our surface is sticky, our acid mantle is made to be sticky because it's a way of, you might say, um, catching stuff to stop it kind of getting into the skin. But the challenge with that sometimes, if we're not looking after our skin, um, is that we can have a build up of things that can collect in this stickiness. Dead skin cells is an example, dirt, grime and debris. So sometimes what you, you find in some products are what we call AHAs or hydroxyfruity acids. And when you put those onto the surface of the skin, they will gently change the pH of the skin. And that then means if there's anything that is stuck to the surface of the skin, it could be easier to remove those from, um, from the skin. So you find those in certain products, which are, as I say, AHAs. And we actually find those in one of our products called the R3 Factor. So the R3 Factor is a fabulous product that you can use to put onto your skin when you want to um, change, you may say, the consistency of that acid mantle to help to remove anything that's stuck to it. So um, other things that you will find which are known as AHAs, not just lemon, but anything from citrus. You also have things like malic acid, which comes from apples you have lactic acid which comes from um, fermented milk <coughs> you also have um, glycolic acid which comes from sugarcane so you will notice those ingredients are in the r3 factor so that is known as a very gentle exfoliator so it's not a scrub like exfoliator, but it can um, gently change the pH. So it's easier for anything that is stuck to the skin to come off. So I just wanted to explain that to you, how you can actually change the pH of the skin. But generally speaking, and this is as a generalization now for skin, is that if your skin is more oily, what would you put on your skin? If your skin is more dry, what would you put on your skin? Now I'm talking about your skin now, not just what's on your face, but all over your body. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just mention, as you can see, that on um, both sections, I have put in the aloe hand soap. Now the aloe hand soap is an amazing product that is multi-purpose. It's a multi-purpose cleanser. 
So this is the product that I would recommend that people very, very simply can use for um, using in their bath. They can use it as a shower product. They can use it as um, a, a gentle cleanser for their hands and their face. So this is the base multi-purpose product for all of your skin. You can also even wash your uh, wash your hair with it if you want to so it's a great great product and obviously we we have specific products for all these different areas but sometimes if people are asking what can i use as a very simple general multi-purpose product so that is the product that i would use that is suitable um, for everybody's skin so that's that's why i put that there but then if we want to deal with skin that is a little bit oilier and i'm not putting in any age here because our skin can be oily through different stages of our life. But generally speaking, if you think your skin is oilier, then you could use the, um, the refining gel cleanser from the Sonia range. And obviously that is for men as well as women. Okay, so this is just as a general thing now for skin. The Aloe Avocado Face and Body Soap. This product I would also suggest for oilier skin. That is because it is a it is a soap based product, so it is very mildly alkaline. Okay, so that is something that I would do just um, to kind of swap. You might say the pendulum a little bit more over um, from it being the skin being too oily. So you kind of making you want to kind of dry it out slightly, if if that makes sense, without it drying the skin. Now on the other side. If your skin feels drier, then you want to use something that has more conditioning ingredients in it. So if the skin is dry, and I'm talking about the face now, obviously, then I would suggest using the Infinite Cleanser. Once again, we are not putting it in any specific ages. This is a generalization for drier skin. So keeping it really, really simple, to cleanse the skin if it's oilier, then I would go for the gel cleanser. To cleanse the skin if it is drier, I would go for the infinite, okay? And as a general multi-purpose body wash, then we have the hand soap, okay? So um, I want to just kind of put that in place before we, uh, we move on. Okay. I thought it'd be quite nice to kind of go back to what starts to happen to our skin and what kind of things do we see changing in our skin as we start to um, as we start to go through different chapters in our life, you might say. So one of the first things that we start to notice, both in men and women, is uh, when we are hitting puberty. So hormones are responsible for the development of those sebaceous glands and what it all, they also do is the hormones especially testosterone is going to start to um, have an effect on how much sebum is produced okay so remember that's the oil that is produced from our sebaceous glands so that's one of the things that you will start to notice that your skin can become oilier now, as far as men goes, go, remember that generally speaking, their, their skin will appear oilier. So guys, your skin will appear oilier because you have more sebaceous glands, which means you have more oil. The other thing that you will notice is that because your pores are, you have more pores, they are also bigger. And because you have more pores and they're bigger, then it is easier for things to get inside your pores. So some of the things that you notice in male skin is, uh, first of all, I'm gonna talk about hair follicles. So remember, um, the hair follicle and our pores, what can start to happen there is that if you have black skin or Asian skin, your hair tends to grow more curly, so it's easier for the hair to loop back in to um, a, a neighboring pore or, or um, follicle. So with that, we call it ingrowing hairs. Or sometimes you call it razor bumps or shaver bumps. And often you can find that people who have darker skin 
will tend to get more ingrowing hairs, especially around on the neck area. So when, when you have a guy that is starting to go through puberty, this is one of the things that you might say you need to start to address, that it's a really good idea to start to bring in a scrub-like product because by bringing in a scrub-like product, you are massaging the areas to help to bring out, out um, the hair from looping back in. So that is important. So remember that your sebaceous glands are always connected to your hair follicles. 70 to 90% of people are actually affected with what you might want to call blemish skin. And this is going to actually give the potential to actually to develop what we know as blackheads or pimples or, or anything like that. So um, that is some of the things that can make a big difference to how we are going through our, our, with our teenage skin, you might say. So what I've got here is a little bit of a formula for you that I thought would be quite useful that I would generally recommend for both uh, men and women when the, the skin is going through those, um, those changes. So I hear lots of people giving lots of different ideas, but you know what? Less is more. And when your skin is changing, um, it is really important not to kind of put, make it too fussy. So there are two products that I would recommend as my basic regime for um, teenage skin, okay? Now, the first one you can see on there is Aloe Activator. And Aloe Activator, um, Aloe contains saponins, and remember I said on the previous slide where we had the pH scale, that we were talking about Aloe Activator being a little bit neutral, okay? Because Aloe has the same pH as human skin. So literally, what I would be suggesting is that you could wipe over the skin okay with the aloe activator so that would be your basic cleansing product okay literally um then what you're going to use as more of your moisturizing product but also it has other goodies in it is actually the aloe msm gel so you can see both of those products on there the aloe activator is in the blue the blue one and then you have the aloe msm gel is the white with the, the silver now what i absolutely love about that product is that it contains our aloe and it has this sulfur called msm and we have that sulfur also found in our forever freedom drink but the addition of things like rosemary which is really soothing uh, bearberry and tea tree oil but then we have this thing called willow bark and willow bark is um, a natural ingredient. And you may have heard of things like aspirin that are a synthetic form of willow bark. So I just thought I'd let you know what willow bark is. So we have these, these amazing ingredients alongside our aloe. So that's really going to soothe. So literally, those are the two products that I would suggest, especially when teenage skin now remember guys tend to notice this happens 70 to 95 percent of of people might start to see a few challenges with their skin as their skin is changing it is it's keeping it really really simple now the other thing that you can introduce is there's two other products so i want to go back to, down to the scrub what we have with the scrub and you can see that on the screen there it is um, the green one. What this has, it has tiny microspheres of Jehovah beads. Now, um, this, once again, we don't have any plastics or anything in, the, in our product. So we, once again, remember what I said about people caring about the environment. So literally what the, the Jehovah is going to do, that it's going to gently roll over the surface of the skin. And the best way to use a scrub like product or an exfoliator is not to overuse it so don't be tempted to use this product on your face every day okay you're going to learn today that men's skin is is sensitive um it's uh, a scrub should not be used every day on man's skin so what you're going to do is use the scrub in the areas of congestion so that could be maybe around the chin area around the nose area so where we see they're kind of like we could get um 
the uh, blackheads or also just concentrate on those areas where you might get, get in growing hairs because we want to keep the, the skin nice and healthy. So these are the areas that, are, that you can use that on. Now, the scrub can be used on the body every day, okay? Because the skin on our face is um, thinner, um, more, uh, it needs to be treated with a little, little bit more uh, care than on our body. So you can use the scrub, on your body every day but on your face we don't really want to use scrubs more than two to three times a week so you might want to get into the habit of using a scrub every other day or every every two to three days okay that is the important thing is not to overuse it now i want to talk about the marine mask i absolutely love the marine mask we have this is our kind of like clay based mask and this is fantastic because clay is a really good base product that you that you can use, especially if skin is a little bit oily. OK, so what we have with this, we have rosemary again, which is very soothing. We have cucumber that's soothing honey and uh, we have algae extract. So this is the marine extract. So this is a ready to go, ready to use face mask. And once again, with face masks, you would be probably be using this product maybe two, maybe two to three times a week. Even once a week is better than not using it at all. So to incorporate this in into your uh, regime. Now for guys as well, remember, we're not just thinking about the face, so then we're going to concentrate quite a bit on that. But um, with guys, you also start to get um, through these teenage years we can also get congestion and challenges on our back because we can start to get hair that is starting to, to grow on our back. So this is a great product that you can also use to put on your back. You can also see on there um, that you can use it on your, on your, on your feet and your, and your hands as well. So it's a really great product that you can use if you feel you want to give your, your hands and feet a little bit of, um, of a treat. So, Hey, you know, male grooming, um, female skincare, we all can do with a bit of pampering. So I just want to tell you um, a little bit about how you could, like a little, little pampering regime that you could, you could do at, at home. So the first thing that I would do is if you want to look after your feet, you get some nice warm water, you put in the, the hand soap and you wash your feet a little bit you take your feet out and then you give them a little bit of a, a scrub with the aloe scrub and then you soak your feet for a little bit longer okay so then you take your feet out and then what you do is you take the marine mask and you put the marine mask all over your feet and then what you do is you cover your feet with cling film wrap your feet in a nice warm towel and relax okay and leave that for probably around about half an hour or longer and then rinse off the face mask and then you can massage into your feet propolis cream and that is a really lovely way to give yourself a little bit of self-care especially now where we've got some time on our hands okay so that is both for um for men and women to do that you can do exactly the same thing on your hands as well so i thought i'd just uh, share that with you Okay, so um, that's just a, a few ideas around um, what to do on the outside. So what about the inside? What about nutritional support? Well, please remember that um, we have, when we're going through changes in our skin, it is kind of hormone generated. And so what we can do is we can support our skin from the inside out. And we have our aloe vera drinking gel. Now, literally for your skin, you can drink any of the aloe veras. Yeah, it's all down to your preference on taste. So the aloe vera gel you can see on here, this is our plain gel. And this to me tastes a little bit like um, sharp grapefruit. You may decide that you prefer something a little bit fruitier. So you go with the aloe berry nectar or if you want to have something that's quite sweet, you go with the aloe peaches. So it is literally down to your own preference on which one you want to drink to support your skin. 
And obviously, if you want to drink the Forever Freedom, you can also drink that one as well. But obviously, that does have the benefit of having glucosamine, chondroitin, and that MSM we've already spoken about. And these are sulfurs. And glucosamine and chondroitin are sulfurs that are found in normal healthy joints. So um, it is down to you which one you want to drink. Now, one of the things that is important is to support um, our skin from the inside, as I said, by drinking, if we're drinking the aloe, and then supporting our digestive system and, and our gut health. Because from our gut, that can reflect on lots of things around our, our body. So the two that I would recommend specifically together would be the aloe vera drinking gel and the Forever Active Pro B. So that means every single day you're going to be putting into your body some healthy bacteria to support your microbiome. OK, which is your your good bacteria um, within your body. So that is something that I would definitely recommend. Um, the Vitalize for men. A lot of people will say to me, um, when when would you start suggesting having this product? Well, you know, um, with young adults, this is definitely a great product that you can start to take. And of course, um, with this particular product, it has been um, specifically designed for men to take to support men's health. So um, these are the three products that I would definitely suggest um, as that kind of nutritional support for um, your, your health, health and well-being, and especially if you're focusing on your skin health. Okay, um, shaving. I'll give you a few stats here. So first of all, um, yeah, younger men are more likely to grow facial hair. But then if we look at people, um, older men, 45% <laughs> of old, older men will shave on a daily basis. Um, did you know that the average man in a lifetime would do 16,000 shaves? OK, now, one of the interesting things, as I said, that um, men's skin is actually, you might say, um, can get more irritated and needs to be cared for in a different way to women's skin. So you can't say men's skin is tougher um, because I want you to think about this for a moment. That when you shave, you are going to be causing some irritation to the surface of your skin. It can have an effect if you're using products that are quite harsh, um, foaming products there for shaving. Uh, it can be quite drying to the skin. It can affect your, your pH and your acid mantle. Um, you can remove some of the, the skin cells from the surface of your skin, so it can then expose immature skin cells so you know we have to really understand that when we're shaving it can upset the normal balance of the skin okay so that is really important to understand that regular shaving can definitely make the skin feel and be more stressed another thing is that if people are shaving and they are using razor blades that are, are blunt and also, as I said, that if you're using products on your face that are quite um, uh, in alkaline, they're quite strong alkaline products, or even not putting enough product on the skin, so the razor is going to glide over the top. And of course, we know that can happen when we start to get razor burn, uh, we start to get little nicks on the skin and things like that. So we really do need to look after the skin. So I'm going to share with you a um a few ideas on what i would suggest as um, some great products that can be used for general general skin care uh, and then also incorporate it into a shaving regime so let me just move on for you so i've got a couple of products on here that um i i have I have five children and out of my five children, I have four, four guys. And uh, I also have Ashley in my life as well. So I have five guys in my house. And of course, as you can all had, because a lot of them have left home now, we've only got one left. As you can imagine, uh, through a period of time, um, I have seen 
the products that my guys use and uh, as you can imagine if you came to my home it would have aloe, aloe products forever aloe products absolutely everywhere if you were to cut my head off and you would see aloe vera written all the way through forever aloe vera all the way through uh, like a sticker rock and that's exactly the same with the boys in my life so um these are um obviously getting feedback and sharing ideas that they still absolutely love the hand soap so they they will shave with the hand soap okay the great thing about this product as i said it is it is a multi-purpose product and um what you can do with this product as well if you're somebody that likes to, sh to shave while you're in the shower it's a great product that you can literally uh, be using while you're, you're showering. Uh, you can use it as your, your body wash. So as I said, it's a really simple, easy product that you can use. And you can see it contains um, like cucumber again, which is, which is very, uh, very gentle and soothing on your skin. If you want to, you can use the Alpha E Factor. Now, the Alpha E Factor acts a little bit like a shaving oil. And what you can do with that, it's a little product that is a perfect oil that you can take out and about with you. When we get back into the outside world and uh, maybe you want to pop that into your gym bag or you're going away for a weekend and you just literally want to have a small product that you can use as a shaving oil, absolutely perfect for that. The other thing about, about the Alpha E Factor is that if you're a guy that also not just shaves in the morning but feels you want to just have a little bit of a tidy up in the evening, you can literally use that product over your skin for your evening shave. So that is, a, that is a, an absolutely great product that you can use. Now obviously if you want to, you can also use the Sonia Cleanser. So that, that is from our Sonia range. Um, I'm just giving you a bit of an idea of what I find that the guys in my life um, have used for, for so many years and absolutely adore the products. So um, the next thing is, can we remember we spoke about using an exfoliator? Now, what I love about this particular exfoliator, which has come from our target range, this is a three-in-one product. I like to call this I don't know the Rolls Royce of all exfoliators, but this one is specifically the product that you would use on your face. Now, obviously, um, someone's asked the question about the, um, the foot scrub. Yeah, so what I would use as a foot scrub, I would use the aloe scrub that I've already mentioned, the one that's um, the, the green one. You could use this one if you wanted to on, on your feet, but um, generally speaking, I think the green, the green scrub, the aloe scrub, um, is your multi-purpose all over your body, your face as well if you wanted to. But this particular one I'm sharing with you now, this smoothing exfoliator is the one that has, um, a th it has like three actions going on. So let me explain. We have the Yehoba beads that are going to do kind of a, this the action where we're going over our skin, um, like a, a rolling a action, a gentle rolling action. And then what we have, we have sustainably sourced. Remember, once again, uh, people are looking for products that contain ingredients that are kind to the environment. So sustainably sourced bamboo. And what that acts is like a, a sweeping effect. So it's lifting off the skin. And can you remember, I spoke about how to make the acid mantle less sticky. And we spoke about lemon as one of those ingredients. Well, when we look at the bromelain that comes from pineapple and the papain that comes from papaya, as well as using with grape juice, these are having an effect to kind of change the stickiness on the surface of the skin. OK, so what you have really is a three in one product where you're going to get the Yehoba doing the kind of the circular movements. You're getting the bamboo doing the brushing movements and then you're getting the bromelain and the papain and the grape juice kind of just making the skin less sticky. So you can imagine it's a three in one product that can obviously um, remove any congestion, any dead skin cells. And this is going to encourage the new skin cells to come through. OK, 
Remember as well, this is a perfect product to help to stop getting um, so many or reduce down, you might say, ingrowing hair challenges that might happen, especially if the, the, the hair is curlier, all right? So, um, the next thing, oh, and same thing with that one is that using it in shaving is that you would use it three times a week. So rather than having to actually use it as a, as a, a separate product, that you can actually incorporate it into your, your shaving uh, cleanser product, okay? So whether you're cleansing or shaving, literally what you can do is you can take, let's say you're using the hand soap, you can take the hand soap, you can put the exfoliator into the hand soap and then you can massage it over, over your face. Um, I know talking to guys, they like to be kind of time, <laughs> don't be spending a long time doing lots of little steps. So you can actually combine those two together. Exactly the same thing if you want to use the Sonia cleanser. Obviously for the ladies, you can do exactly the same thing as well. If you, you find you want to mix the two together, but kind of alternate, kind of do it like, um, um, three times a week. One thing that I will say that I think is really important is that if you are using the smoothing exfoliator or the aloe scrub on your face, they are exfoliators. It's not a good idea to use the R3 factor on the same day as using the scrub-like exfoliator. The R3 factor contains AHAs and the exfoliators contain Yehoba. Um, Sophia's. So there are two exfoliators. So that would probably be a little bit too much for your skin. So if you do like using a scrub like product, um, such as this one here or the aloe scrub, then maybe you decide you want to alternate it. Um, so you'd use the R3 factor one day and then you'd use the smoothing exfoliator the next day. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. As I say, if you've got any questions want a little bit more clarity um, then please just pop it in the box and i'll try and get through some today otherwise i will get back to you right so what we're saying is that we have cleansed the face right um then if you're cleansing the face you can also shave with those products as well all right so you either just cleansing uh, or you're cleansing and then shaving with those products. So there are, there are two in one product, it's fantastic. Then once you've cleansed and you've obviously rinsed off the product, then one of my most favorite products of all time is our wonderful balancing toner that comes from our target range. Now, this particular product contains hyaluronic acid and I'm gonna talk about hyaluronic acid in a little bit more detail soon, but hyaluronic acid, often you will see it as sodium hyaluronate. And this is an ingredient that actually has the ability to attract a thousand times its own weight in water. So it's a really good ingredient to put into products that we're going to attract uh, moisture into our skin. Now, of course, one of the things that we're doing, especially if we're shaving, we need to make sure that we're keeping our skin nice and balanced because we can be stressing it. We can be irritating it. So this also has seaweed extract. It has cucumber. But what I would do with this product is I would, and I say the same thing for the ladies, exactly the same, is put the toner into your hands and then just let the wonderful hyaluronic acid just get into your skin okay it's amazing so if you want to put it onto a piece of cotton wool you can do that if you want to but i'd rather have the hyaluronic acid in my skin than give it to the piece of cotton wool but once again it's your choice so just literally let your skin drink in the power of hyaluronic acid so with that you are also feeling that your skin feels fresh and calm. And then very importantly as well, we want to reduce the appearance of open pores. Remember that male skin has more pores and they appear to be larger. Now, we never want to close our pores because our skin is our third lung, so to speak. It needs to breathe. So uh, we want to, if we can help them to appear to be smaller, 
but not close them, that is, that is important, okay? So, um, freshing and calming to the skin and reducing the appearance of open pores. Okay, so next one, what could you use as your moisturiser? Well, we have a whole selection of products that you could suggest as a moisturiser. And I think the most important thing is to go with something that you like the feel of, the texture of, the smell of. Um, and that is the, the great thing that our products can really mix and match. So I've got the aloe lotion up here. There's um, a lot of people um, will use this as their, their daily moisturiser. We have the moisturising lotion, which is the purple one. They are soothing and they're calming. We have the Yehoba in there, vitamin E, plus collagen and elastin, which are the protein fibres that you find in skin. The difference between the aloe lotion and the moisturising lotion is preference on the, the texture and the thickness of the product. Okay, so the aloe lotion is slightly... Um, more fluid than the moisturizing lotion. So once again, as I say, it is down to preference. Now the Gentleman's Pride, what an amazing, amazing smell this is. And what I like about this product, that obviously this can also double up as a really nice fragrance for men's skin. Um, it really gives a lovely, gentle, uh, fragrance on the skin without it being too overpowering so people could use this product rather than using maybe a cologne we have the rosemary we have uh, the chamomile in there a, a beautiful beautiful soothing product that as I said the smell is is really nice so it's um it's it's something that people as I say will, will use rather than using maybe a cologne if they don't want to use a cologne on their skin because uh, they're worried about maybe alcohol being quite trying and then um, obviously as well if you want to you could also use the Sonia soothing gel if you want to that's obviously from um, the the range that we've kind of brought through um, today once again that is preference and then we have the awakening eye cream I absolutely love this product so remember uh, this isn't a product just for the guys, but I thought I'd pop it in here because it's um, it's a great product that literally you can use um, on your eyelids, underneath your eye area. What is a little bit of a tip for you that when you are using an eye cream, always apply the eye cream on your ring finger because your ring finger has less pressure than any other finger that you have. So um, literally what you're going to do is put a small amount on your ring finger and then you're going to just gently apply it around the eye area, nice and gentle, not kind of pressing too hard because the skin around our, our eye area and our eyelids is thinner than the skin that we have on our face, is less fat deposits in that area and that's why that's the bit that seems to go first when we're going through the aging process but also what is great about this we um we have these um the ingredients in, in here are uh, important to reduce the appearance of puffiness also dark circles and also the appearance of uh, wrinkles around the eyes what I love about this product is something that you can, if your eyes are getting tired during the day, why not literally take a little bit and just pop it around your eyes, especially right now, a lot of people are sitting in front of computer screens a lot longer than normal, so their eyes are getting tired. So it's really soothing just to pop around the eyes even during the day. Another uh, reason to use it around the eyes is um, we're in the pollen season. And so you might find that just popping it around your eyes is a great product for soothing the eye area. Okay, so those are um, some of the products that we have right now. So this brand new product is a hydrating serum. And this product is really taking the place of a product that we had before, which is called the Sonia Serum. But I just want to make this very clear that the Sonia Serum that we had before, um, 
was a two-in-one product where it was like a serum type product and a moisturizer okay this is not a moisturizer this is a product that you are going to pair up with your favorite moisturizer so this product is what you will put underneath your favorite moisturizer okay so that's that's one of the things to remember it doesn't have the same consistency but it has the most amazing smell so this from a, a man's perspective is a great product to incorporate into your regime especially if you're a guy that does seem to get irritated or have sensitive skin especially when you have your shaving regime so this is one that you would pop underneath your favorite moisturizer whether you're choosing the aloe lotion or the gentleman's pride or any of the other ones so um, that's what i would be doing i'd be pairing that up with say as an example the aloe lotion so it's talking about the four types of hyaluronic acid now remember i've already kind of brought this up i absolutely love hyaluronic acid so hyaluronic acid is a naturally occurring ingredient component that you get all around your body okay so it's not just found in the skin we find it around our joints we find it in our cell membranes it's um, an ingredient that is everywhere but it's um it is an abundance in our skin and what can happen is the hyaluronic acid that we have in our skin just like other things in our skin can start to um diminish um, through through time through aging etc but what is great about hyaluronic acid is that hyaluronic acid as we said has the ability to attract a thousand times its own weight in water but what is also important about hyaluronic acid is that we want it to kind of be at different levels in our skin so we want it to be able to be especially if we are giving this a powerful boost of hydration as it says on the on the slide so we want hyaluronic acid to be quite happy being on the surface of the skin and we want it to go into the the deeper layers remember we want it to go further down than just sit on the surface of the skin and one of the things that we have within the different hyaluronic acid degrees of size you might say is that we we also want it to be what we call hydrolyzed and hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid is where we kind of snipped it into tiny tiny bits so it has the ability to go further so this is the most amazing product to really encourage and and hydrate support the hydration of your of your skin so that is the hyaluronic acid um, we obviously have aloe in here so we have aloe plus um, we have shea butter so shea butter i'm sure you've come across shea butter before but it's an emollient now one of the important things by using an emollient is that we have the hyaluronic acid that is kind of doing its job by attracting the moisture but then we want the moisturizer to stay in the skin and on the skin we don't want it to kind of disappear again so by using an emollient it's kind of going to keep it in it's like putting the lid on it so to speak so that's why we've added the shea butter it contains fatty acids and it also contains vitamins another ingredient is actually snow mushrooms now snow mushrooms has been in, have been in skincare for a while in fact some people will compare the benefits of snow mushrooms to hyaluronic acid so it's often compared to hyaluronic acid snow mushrooms also contain a lot of nutrients phytonutrients as well as proteins and important lipids tamarind now tamarind is something that we have in another product of ours but in a completely different category and we know tamarind as garcinia but tamarind um we remember we were talking about ahas so tamarind also has a um in that role of aha so you know if you're looking for a little bit of a lighter a brighter looking skin um the role of tamarind is is there we also have white tea white tea is known for its antioxidant properties and then we have mimosa bark 
mimosa bark is soothing and nourishing to the skin. So we have an absolutely fabulous all round product here. And then as we're coming to um, our last few products now, I thought I'd just um, bring in our biocellulose mask because often we are thinking uh, about when we're looking at the mask mar market, which is, um, which is really interesting. I've got some stats about the mask market in a moment, but let's just talk about what makes our biocellulose mask um, so amazing. So easiest way to think about this, this biocellulose is actually a selection of fibers and the fibers are grown from healthy bacteria. So it takes around about 10 days for these fibers to grow. And this easiest way to think about it is imagine the fibers that you see in a spider's web. So imagine that you have got a spider spinning its web. I want you to imagine these fibers are being spun. They are then collected and then they are, these fibers are woven into fabric. Another thing to give you the idea of how that works, imagine that you have sheep and they have had their coats removed, they've been sha shaven, yeah, shaved. <laughs> so they've had the, their, their wool removed. And what happens with the wool, then it has to be changed into not just a, a load of fiber, but into a usable, fabric or material to be made into fabric so it's the same kind of process i want you to imagine that it's really really strong these fibers these biocellulose fibers in fact when you can see the size of it it's a thousand times each one of these little fibers is a thousand times thinner than human hair and so very very fine and because it's so fine it means that the power of using biocellulose as a mask in comparison to a sheet mask that is made out of paper or any other fabrics that you may see around is that the biocellulose is so fine that it has the ability to cling to your skin and if you think about it it's going to sit on your face so it becomes like your personal face mask which is absolutely amazing so what we do is we take this biocellulose and then we need to put things into the, into the mask to soak the mask in lots of goodies. So what we actually soak it in, first of all, um, the, the fibers themselves actually contain aloe, which is, which is quite amazing because what happens is the fermentation takes place. We have coconuts and we have coconut water and then the good bacteria is living there and then as these um these microorganisms are actually fed our aloe vera during the whole development stage so the first thing to think about all the fibers actually will contain aloe vera so we're the first company in the world to actually have aloe vera incorporated into the fibers okay like i said imagine the spider spinning a web so then what we do, we take this amazing mask and we're going to dip it in lots of goodies and we dip it in a serum that contains more aloe, it has some wonderful botanicals and then when you put it onto your face, um, what will happen if this dual delivery system is that as, the, as it goes, you put it onto your face, as it starts to break down, then the aloe from within the fibres will also be released. Okay, so it is the most amazing, amazing product that you can use. So um, men are definitely using more face masks now than ever before. Um, I've got some uh, figures up for you there that you, that you can see. And what is also important is that, as I've already mentioned, that uh, products that are specifically for guys that have facial hair or they have beards. In fact, that, that particular sector has grown by 17% and that's according to a company called Cantor. And so when we're starting to look at products, you can literally put the biocellulose mask over a beard. Now, when you think about facial hair and beards, sometimes the skin 
below the beard and the facial hair can maybe not be the best because it's uh, it's hidden. So this is a great product to give um, give your your skin below your facial hair a little bit of, of a treat. And then also we have our Alpha E Factor Friend again, and this is a, another product that you can also use to put into your facial hair. So look after your facial hair and you can uh, apply, add a little bit of the Alpha E Factor into your beard um, to condition and support. And then as we're coming to the end of the, of the slides, we mustn't forget that also guys, you can also enjoy our anti-aging skincare system which is the infinite by forever. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why you can't use that. The products that I've gone through are what I call my, my, um, my mix and match men's products, um, basic products. But as you saw as well, they all kind of look good together. They all have blues and whites. So they all, they, they all work in synergy together as well. But the infinite range, you can see the little pop down there, this is if you want to also take a supplement to support your skin. This is the, the supplement that you would take. Um, it contains collagen from marine extracts. So it, sorry, marine collagen, I should say, coming from, from fish. And um, that is really important. We have vitamin C that also supports collagen. Uh, biotin, which uh, also supports healthy skin as well. And so um, this is a, a product that you can take two of these little tablets every day if you want to support your skin. Alongside that, we have a cleanser. If you want to use the Infinite Cleanser, you can shave with the Infinite Cleanser if you want to. You can follow it exactly the same as we did in the previous slides. With this as well, we have the serum. The, um, the serum that you have is um, on a different line to the one that was the targeted serum that, um, that I've already mentioned today. But we also do have an infant serum which um, contains um, some hyaluronic acid in there and also what we call these peptide chains. So what's interesting about peptide chains, in fact, peptide chains also are found in your, uh, your eye cream, your awakening, awakening eye cream. So what peptide chains do, which is quite interesting, is that peptide chains come from these amino acids, which obviously proteins. And what peptide chains do, they're the things that are going to stimulate the production of collagen. And what happens with our peptide chains as we get older, they're not so efficient at doing their job. So what we have in this product is peptide chains that are going to um, uh, support the production of collagen. So that's how um, the serum works. It's a fantastic product. And what I like about, you probably noticed that the, the serum that we have in the infinite range is silver. And then you have the, the pot here of the supplement is also silver. The whole idea is that they have been designed to complement each other, okay? So one is working from the outside, that's the serum. And then the supplement is working from the inside. So you're putting collagen into your body and then you're putting peptide chains on the outside. And the peptide chains like to work alongside collagen. I kind of think it's, um, imagine kind of like a, a magnet, how they like to attract each other. So that's why they have been designed to work together. If you don't want to take them both, that's your choice. But I'm always giving people um, the advice that if you want to get the best results, why don't you try them together? Okay, and then we have um, a great moisturizing, uh, moisturizer as well that you can also use the range. I just wanted to keep it, keep it more specific for the guys today. And then um, we mustn't forget that we still need to care for our, our skin, on our overall body, and the sun is trying to come out. And as we're hitting the summer, that we still need to uh, look after our skin, even if we're outside for a short period of time because we have our UVAs, which are the aging rays, and the UVBs, which are the burning rays. So we still need to protect our skin. You can pop this onto your face 
We also have the protecting day lotion from the target range that you can pop onto your face, guys. Um, you know what's really interesting? How many of your, you guys are driving around and you always put your sunglasses on when you are in the car and you never think of protecting your skin from the rays that are bouncing on windows. So I always suggest that if you are out driving around in the sun, even with your windows up and your roof up, that you put sunscreen on your face on a sunny day. So the, our aloe, our amazing aloe vera is the number one ingredient in here. Then the, 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 white, the white ingredient that we have there is a mineral called zinc oxide and it is non nano sized which means it is not really really tiny so it's non nano sized we don't want um nano particles to go into our skin we want it to sit on the surface of our skin so this is an advanced coating technology that is why it is quite white the power of this product is amazing but what you need to do is when you are applying it to your face or your body is not try to put a huge amount in your hand in one go and blob it on the idea is to build it up in layers so it is really really powerful it contains vitamin E. Uh, it is also water resistant up to 80 minutes. It uh, is a broad spectrum, so it's going to protect you from your aging rays, UVAs, and your burning rays, UVBs. So uh, we have a promotion at the moment that is an important promotion that you can um, try. You can get the sunscreen um, and um, you can get the biocellulose masks. I know that is still available. I have a final, uh, final slide that the company has asked me to share some information with you. And that is we've got some webinars that are coming up very, very soon. In fact, the first one is starting this coming Wednesday. That's the 17th of June. And this is a new starter webinar. And these are going to take place on a, on a monthly basis. And this is going to give an overview to who forever are in the UK and Ireland, um, all the basics that you need to know to get your business up and running. And also we have on Saturday, the 20th of June, this coming Saturday, we have our, our recognition, our UK recognition party. This is going to be broadcast live from our head office, Longbridge Manor. So Bob Parker, our country manager, is going to also have some guests and we're going to bring some fun straight into your living room. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to spend just five minutes answering a few questions, if you bear with me. So, um, Okay, let's have a look at some questions that we have. Okay, so first of all, um, let me see. Okay, so uh, a question here about if you've been in, in the sun, and you have got a little bit of pigmentation that has built up in your skin. Um, what, what product would we suggest for that? Well, we have the illuminating gel that is from the Sonia range. And what you can do with the illuminating gel, you can put it on those specific areas. We have, um, it has some really nice botanicals in there and some licorice. So you can put that on, on two specific areas. And um, what I will also do is I would use the Sonia gel mask. And the Sonia gel mask is an absolutely amazing product, even though it says two to three times a week. This is a mask that you actually put on at night time. You can't see the mask. It just looks like, um, well, it just absorbs it onto your skin. So you can't see, it's not like one of those clay masks where you look like you're wearing a mask. And um, what I would do with that is I'd put my illuminating gel on and then I'd put my gel mask over the top. And you can actually put that on every night if you want to. That is the product that I personally use every night before I go to bed, okay? So that's my nighttime product. It's, it's an amazing product. 
Um, so the next one, um, yeah, when you have when you have ingrowing ingrowing hairs, like I said, it can be the fact of literally we need to make sure that we are using a, a scrub like product. So you can use your scrub like product. It can be the Aloe Scrub. It can be the Target Exfoliator. Either those two products that you could use for your son and. Um, just make sure that you are not overusing the product two to three times a week would be back. Um, the R3 factor and the alpha E factor. Um, yes, they, they both contain vitamin A. What I'll do, Nikki, is I will um, send you... Actually, no, I can probably answer it on here. So I get this question to ask quite a lot. So generally speaking, uh, when it comes, because this is a man slot today, but generally speaking, um, that women tend to, if they're pregnant, be advised not to use vitamin A on their skin or products that contain vitamin A uh, on their skin when they are pregnant, okay? It's just one of those things about vitamin A. So um, I hope that answers, answers that. So, all I'm saying is that this is a man's slot today, so we won't be talking about the women and pregnant women. Um, yeah, the aloe, the aloe hand soak. You know, aloe loves your skin, um, absolutely loves your skin. So it's a product that you can use uh, for the whole family. What I, I say with, with really young children is that you take the aloe soap and you pop it into maybe their bath water, you swirl it around in the bath water and that's how they use the product on your really, really young children. But yes, absolutely a multi-purpose product that everybody can use. The R3 factor, yes, the R3 factor is the best way to use that because it contains AHAs is to use it underneath your moisturizer, okay? So you put your R3 factor on first of all, and you can use your R3 factor every single day if you want to. But generally speaking, what I say about the R3 factor, it's the kind of product that you know if you're somebody that gets, you feel like you've got things stuck to your face, and that could be, sounds awful, doesn't it? But it could be people that maybe live in, in the city and the amount of pollution around or they're around an area, they have a job that there is more pollution around and you feel like you've been in contact with stuff from the atmosphere that's sticking to your skin. The R3 factor is just the most amazing product to pop on and then put your moisturizer on on top every day. But generally speaking, those kind of products, you wouldn't need to be using them every day. You'd probably use them two to three times a week, like, like I said. Uh, what else can I see? Da, 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 da. Um, yes, Mike, you can use the, the new serum with the infinite range. The great thing about our products is that they can definitely mix and match. Um, the gentleman's pride is suitable for all skin types. Um, yes, you can use the infinite complex, which is the supplement. You can definitely enjoy using that alongside the new hydrating serum rather than the infinite serum. Um, absolutely fine for that. Um, So I think, let me just see if there's any more questions. Um, yeah, I think I've answered everything for now. So um, if, if you think of anything else, just pop your questions down. Um, oh, hang on, there's one more here. Sorry, guys, there's two more here. <laughs> I just found a few more. Um, is the serum under a moisturiser and protective day lotion? Right, okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your, your uh, serum, whether it's the infinite serum or the new hydrating serum that we don't have quite yet, you put that on first and then you put your moisturiser on top of that. But then the question is, and the protective day lotion. Now this is totally your choice. You can use the protective day lotion as 
just a moisturizer on its own. So you'd put your serum on and then you'd put your protective day lotion on top. Okay, you can do that. Or you can use your moisturizer and then your protective day lotion on top. That is entirely up to you. What I like to do is when I'm using the protective day lotion, then I will um, put, I put my serum on. What I do is I put my, my serum on and then I put on um, my moisturizer. It can vary between the Infinite One and the Sonya One. I like to really play around with my products. And then on top of that, I put the protecting day lotion on top of that. So that's what I do. I kind of layer it. So I've got three things. Um, and then when it comes to if you feel like you've been out in the sun and you've overdone things in the sun, um, that one of the best things to use on your skin is the, what, what I, this is once again, is a little, little tip for you, is that if you take the aloe lotion, uh, the, um, the aloe lotion that we've already mentioned, and then you take the aloe first. And if you take the aloe first spray, there's a little gap at the top, about this big. And what you can do is you can get the aloe lotion and you can squirt some of the aloe lotion into the aloe first bottle, okay? Um, and then what you do is you shake it before you use and you can literally spray all over your body to cool and calm your skin if you feel like you've overdone things in the sun. I used to live in Spain and that's what I used to use every single day after I've been in the sun, had came out the shower and I'd literally put it all over, all over as um, like a, a cooling body spray so absolutely fantastic if you keep it in the fridge it keeps it nice and cool obviously we have our aloe vera jelly but if you want to kind of deal with big parts of the body or guys um as well but you know once again remember our products are really really multi-purpose um and i think that's it Okay, well, the sun is out. So don't forget to go and put on your sunscreen or your protecting that day lotion. And guys, you know, um, try some new products. Enjoy mixing and matching. And I hope with the information that I've shared today that you can share the love with our products with your loved ones, um, with your fathers, your grandfathers, etc. So have a great week, everybody. And I look forward to catching up with you very, very soon. Take care.